Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the all new 2022 BMW i4 M50. You guys are probably wondering why I'm in my living room and not at the Chicago Auto Show. I forgot to film an intro for this video, and uh, I was about to start uh, editing it. As you can see, we got the editor pulled up and all that kind of stuff, and I was like, ah, I don't have an intro. So here's the intro. We're gonna do a quick walk around on it, and let's get right into the video. Let's go over the new i4 M50. So let's get into the important facts and figures. 536 horsepower, 586 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 60 in less than 4 seconds, and 270 miles of all-electric range. And this is a fully uh, electric vehicle. And I believe it is the first electric vehicle made by BMW that is an M car, which is uh, pretty exciting stuff. Now, you guys can see you've got BMW signature uh, headlights here on the front end. And you will notice that this doesn't look that much different compared to other BMW models. Now, notice that a large portion of the front end is closed off because, again, it's an EV, so it doesn't need the air flow that a regular combustion engine car uh, needs. And overall, from a friendly perspective, if you like the new 4 Series, you're going to like the look of this because it looks pretty much identical. Popping here to the side, uh, they didn't do anything too crazy with the wheel design. It looks like a pretty normal wheel in uh, BMW's new fashion. You've got the red brake calipers and notice the venting there on the side. Uh, and so you just don't have a lot of the weird EV quirks that you have in uh, other cars where they'll do like closed off wheels and the front end will look kind of funny. This, again, just looks like a regular uh, BMW. And so some of you might like that and some of you might not like that because you want a little bit more distinction. Uh, but I think overall it's a positive. Uh, popping here to the rear, you guys can see same thing uh, with the wheel design. And sorry about the lighting on this particular video. It was kind of dark over here on this section and the car's also a pretty dark color. And so the camera just wasn't picking it up uh, very well. But you guys can see popping down below, we've got a uh, diffuser and you got the parking sensors here along the bottom as on top of that. And obviously no exhaust tips or anything because it's an electric car. And it, I think it looks great. Uh, now opening it up, you guys can see here, it's a hatch. Uh, so just like the 4 Series, tons of storage space here in the back. Uh, you guys can see underneath there. And uh, overall, I mean, like, basically similar amounts of storage to, like, a smaller-sized SUV, so it's pretty practical. And then closing that up, you guys can see the whole setup. You got your i4 badge there on the other side. Uh, and then you got the normal, like, you know, 4 Series taillights. Uh, nothing's really changed uh, with that. Now, popping here to the interior, we have the uh, door handles, which... I'm still not so sure about, uh, but you guys can see here with the interior, we've got like the cream color, got the normal BMW door handles. And uh, I actually like this uh, co color combo with the green and then the kind of cream color here with the interior. Uh, I, I just like the kind of the color combos BMW is doing in general. That four series that I had for a week, I thought that was pretty cool setup. Uh, but you can see really nice design here with the seats. Uh, they're comfortable on top of that. And then you guys can see the uh, leg room and again, it's not a huge car, so it's not super spacious, but you can see here with like climate controls and the rear charging ports, all that fun stuff. And yeah, that's the rear of the i4. Now going from that to the front, again, still have the same trick door handles that take quite some time to get used to. Uh, you notice that we've got frameless windows as well. So you can kind of see that there at the top. And then you can see the metallic trim and then the padding all down below. And then again, same door handle right there. And one of the speakers for the sound system, all of our window controls. And notice it has memory seats on top of that. And then here are the front seats. So again, you've got the nice leather with the stitching all throughout. And so overall, from a design perspective, I think the seats look up nice. And then notice we've got our M badge right there at the bottom. Uh, popping in, uh, again, if you're familiar with newer BMWs, this is going to feel just like home. Got the leather wrapped steering wheel and the airbag cover. You can see all the practical controls for like cruise control, for example. And then you got like the heated steering wheel button and then you got the M colors on the steering wheel for the stitching. And then you got your regular stocks and then you can see you've got the full digital uh, gauge cluster screen here. And then notice the range that it says here with the car and then the charge. So that 270 miles might not actually be accurate, uh, but you know, who's it knows. Uh, here's the center infotainment system. Uh, so it's BMW's newer unit. Uh, response time on it's great. Uh, it's easy to use. And uh, overall, the customization on it, I think, is great. And uh, you guys can see here with, like, the uh, interior lighting. 
So I think that uh, I didn't think BMW really needed to change their infotainment system. In my personal opinion, uh, I think that it's basically just gotten, they basically improved upon something that was already really solid. So uh, just a super good system. And you guys uh, saw some of my other reviews with the other BMWs from the auto show. And uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is it kind of reminds me of what uh, Kia and Hyundai are doing with their like screens connected to each other. So it's funny that BMW and then, you know, Hyundai and Kia are doing the same thing. Carbon fiber trim down below, got the vents and then got like your analog controls for the radio. And then you guys can see here at the storage and then notice again, carbon fiber with that whole setup, got some cup holders. And then you guys can see the storage in there with the wireless phone charger. And uh, yeah, the camera just could not get it, not enough light. Got the shifter. And then you guys can see again, just like other BMWs, you have like the drive mode select here. And I like how they have individual buttons for each drive mode. I know that it might seem like it's a waste of space, but it's nice that you can just go, okay, sport mode, okay, comfort mode, instead of having to twist through like a dial and go through like five different drive modes, to get to the mode you want. And then notice the customization there with the sport mode as well. Then you got your parking brake analog control for the infotainment system if you don't want to use touchscreen. See the center console, pretty practical, pretty normal as well. And then glove box, storage space is great. And then you can see carbon fiber and then the ambient lighting down below. And so, you know, I think they did a good job with the materials interior-wise. And then you can see here with the sunroof set up. And yeah, that is the new i4 M50. Really excited to drive it in the near future, hopefully. Cross your fingers that BMW sends one out here to uh, Utah. And then uh, feel free to freeze the frame on this portion. This is like the uh, mock-up of a window sticker, basically, uh, in terms of the options this car has and how much everything costs. And yeah, that's the new i4. Now, before we drive this Timberline, uh, nobody's bought this uh, Mustang with the uh, white package. There's so many comments by people saying that they want to buy this car and then nobody buys it. Suspicious. Anyways, let's actually drive the Timberline. So first off, you guys know, I, like I said, I already talked about the steering wheel. It is amazing. I just love the grips on the steering wheel. I think it's perfect. And yeah, I mean, for a third row SUV, this is my favorite steering wheel uh, in the car market right now. Actually, we're gonna go the other way because there's uh, quite a bit of traffic tonight. Um, other than the steering wheel, seat comfort's actually really good. So these inserts here keep the seats pretty neutral, uh, but they have this nice uh, padding effect to them that I think is really great as well. Uh, so uh, overall, from a seat perspective, very comfortable, and you will not be disappointed with these seats. Getting up and moving, definitely torquey. Change the drive mode to Le Sport, pop it in the manual mode. So press M. Transmission's good too, 10 speed's responsive.